You're listening to the Sketchnote Army Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rohde, the author of the Sketchnote Handbook and the Sketchnote Workbook. And this is the podcast where I chat with sketchnoters and visual thinkers and try to understand what makes them tick. Hey, are you looking for the ideal sketchbook for your sketchnoting practice? The Sketchnote Idea Book is the sketchbook designed for sketchnoters. Equipped with no bleed, no show through paper, you can take almost any marker or pen you can throw at it. Get 10% off with code ARMY at airship.store. Hey everyone, it's Mike Rohde, and I'm excited to bring you Season 14's All the Tips episode. This has become a tradition after many years of gathering all the tips from each episode of the season and gathering them all into a nice little package with a little inspirational music running behind each of the tips from the guests from the show. So I'm excited and honored to bring you nine fantastic visual thinkers and the tips that they offered to you as a listener. What I would say about this is it's a great tool to help you reflect on the the season, of course, but also as we near reach the end of 2023 to reflect on all the things you've learned in the year and all the inspiration that these episodes hopefully have brought to you and encouraged you as you move forward through life. So take a moment uh, and enjoy each one of these tips. I hope that it's inspiring to you and it gets you excited for the new year of 2024 And of course, we'll be back with season 15 in the springtime, and then we'll do it all again. So please listen and enjoy. And until 2024, talk to you soon. Dr. Brian Vardabedian. You know, I think that we talked about docs writing on butcher paper. You know, I might challenge people to sort of take it up a notch. Uh, Obviously, putting up a whiteboard is sort of a little bit of a challenge for a lot of Mm. people in clinics and wall space and that sort of thing. So again, a large... A large pad can do the trick and uh, maybe, maybe take that step to try to be more intentional with the educational material you're using. And you got to kind of just jump in and and try. Uh, so I would say be intentional. That may be one tip. Um, mm. The second tip might be look for a role model. Um, I mean, you can look at the pictures that I that were, that were in, in, in sketch notes and uh, I think I've got some online. I need an Instagram page is what I need. Um, <laughs> But there are, you know, you can look up medical sketch notes or my pod, some of my blog posts I've put on there. And mm-hmm. I just get a role model and see how people do it and what they do. Um, and that's another thing to kind of get you unstuck. Yeah, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it clean. You know, and I think that uh, I'm a minimalist. And I think families, again, you want to think about what, what you're creating for families when they, when they go away and have fun with it. I mean, it's, to me, it's been... I've had more fun in medicine doing this than Hmm. anything else. You know, it kind of, it's been a little bit of a side gig for me and it's been, it's also great for families and makes it more enjoyable for me. That's fun and it serves a purpose and it it communicates. So yeah. And in the the best case scenarios, it uh, integrates uh, the patients with you, which is, uh, which means better outcomes, which everybody's driving for, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We need to, that, that's the golden, that maybe that's the golden ring is to try to connect whiteboards with disease outcomes, which mm. I think if I had the right study design and the right person helping me coordinate it, I think we could do it. But, uh, so that might be a great project to aspire to. Mm. That's the next thing after you get this Austin clinic all set up and rolling. Yeah. I come down, I come down, visit. We'll give you, uh, we'll give you a tour. Yeah, maybe I can do a little teaching. I can uh, teach some basics and yeah, we could do a live uh, live podcast from one of the exam rooms. There we go. That sounds good. I will take you up on that. Austin's one of my favorite cities, so wouldn't be hard to convince me to come. Probably get in the springtime. Bar- we'll get some barbecue. We'll get some barbecue. <laughs> Probably in the springtime. <laughs> yeah. Ingrid Lil. Message first. Don't don't worry about how it looks to start with, mm. and just uh, say something with your drawing. If if there's something you you want to say, then make a make a little drawing out of it, and it doesn't have to be grand at all. It doesn't have to look great. Just mm. 
uh, have it say something and hmm. that then works in, in uh, two directions when it doesn't quite say what you want then you you maybe develop your drawing but it can also be that uh, you when you see it on paper then your message maybe uh, evolves from there hmm. so it's it's not only about drawing it's also about the the storytelling what is it exactly you want to say and that's why it's it's so useful mm. um, yeah that's a good otherwise one. Like yeah otherwise tips um, keep it simple keep it simple don't try to make art mm. keep it simple on any on, on every uh, in every way possible use only one color or I, I use black lines and one color, mm -hmm. and that always looks good. Or yeah, shading and one color, and that way it mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't go uh, wrong. And especially if it's light and bright colors, mm. that's that's the secret. Mm. Good contrast to the black, I think. Right? Yeah. Yes. I tend to lean toward um, aqua. Aqua is my favorite contrast color. A bright yeah. aqua with, with uh, black. Anyway. I remember I copied that from you yeah. back then. <laughs> <laughs> good, 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 good. Yeah. But I, I switched. When, when I'm only using one color, I always use uh, now nowadays yellow. Yellow. And yeah. I, if I have two colors, I use gray and red. But that's okay. also just... The gray, yeah, I suspect, would like probably be like your shadowing and such, right? Little, yes. Little yes. shadows, yeah. What about a third tip? What would be the last one for you? Uh, experiment. Be, mm. Yeah, try maybe try watercolor and several apps and and use it in your everyday. I I, I think that's something in, in either in work or or to to communicate. That that's it. Mm. Use it to communicate. That is the, the whole difference between uh, making art and and then if, if you're just drawing to make something pretty, uh, you don't have a direction. And if you use it to, for example, make a drawing for somebody and say thank you and just a, mm. a little smiley and, and, and write an and Just a, a little bubble. something, yeah. Yes. That gives a different dimension on it that makes it easier to draw and also you get nice feedback and nobody will say, oh, that looks terrible. Hmm. Because you have a nice message with it. Mm -hmm. I, I can, I have a little something here that my friend uh, William, he wrote a book called The Concrete Creative and he sent me, it's, it's so white. bright that you can't see it, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, 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 I see it. Yeah, it's like yeah, a little yeah. note, Sketching right? It's a little note with a drawing. Really nice yeah. for him. And I've got it, I've set it up on my table here. I look at it every day. Just because it's such a nice, you know, a nice sentiment. Yeah, exactly. So. John O'Hay. So I gave a little bit of thought to this. Uh, and I came up with some which I think are maybe disarmingly simple, perhaps. Um, so the first one is, I have a concept, I actually have a mouse mat of it right here, which is mm. the first draft is always perfect. And I really like this framing because mm. it basically says like you're know, like your first draft is probably going to be rubbish but that's okay because that's the job of the first draft and that's mm. what makes it perfect and so i guess my experience is there was when i'm stuck uh or i'm not sure what to do i just have to make myself do anything and actually yeah. i find just doing something is enough to like unblock it um and getting away from this idea that whatever you're going to do is going to be great is just very liberating and so this idea of the first draft is always perfect is is a nice way to come to me i i have another sketch actually it's up on my wall um which is called the doorstep mile which is this really nice uh scandinavian concept i think which is just like getting started can be the hardest part which is like stepping out of your door like it's easy to go for a run once you've got your trainers on and you're out of your door um so you just have to get started. So first draft is always perfect. I, I, there's um, a 
definitely, I strongly believe like this idea that great ideas come during the hard work and not mm. before it. So like you don't have to have your great idea and then start work. Usually all the best ideas I've had are while I'm doing the work. Um, mm. So to get started. The second uh, tip I would have is to keep it simple. And the reason I say that is because I think it's easy to have really high expectations about you know what things are going to turn out like. But actually, in many ways, simple stuff is just as helpful as complex stuff. And sometimes it's it's even more useful. Um, I'm reminded of some diagrams which have been it's super helpful at work and in discussions where people it literally just boxes and lines with <laughs> text in. Like anybody can do boxes and, and lines. Sometimes I find on like just laying out words. Like if there's a process, I like to lay out the words in an order. I'm like, oh yeah, this one becomes for that one. And and I find that is valuable and clarifying mm -hmm. to me. Um, and it doesn't have to be like a complex visual in any ways. Mm -hmm. And I think the other aspect to keep it simple, I think definitely for me it was, but it's easy to get thrown by drawing people. And you'll see obviously like in, in Sketchbonations, my people are super, super simple. A, just a little bit more than the stick man, but there are there are lots of ways actually to draw really simple people, which just allow you to put a person in there, but not get hung up on the drawing of the person. Mm -hmm. And you know, like drawing a star, it kind of looks like a person. You can do somebody jumping, and that's fine, and that gets the idea across, and it doesn't have to be perfect. So keep, keeping it simple is my second tip. Mm -hmm. And my third tip is keep it keep going. Um, so my my experience again is that i have done so many drawings where about halfway through they looked pretty rubbish and i think i think often you know people ask me about oh yeah how can i learn to to, to draw and i i very much believe like it's easy to start drawing something and it look rubbish and then just stop and then assume that you you couldn't do it or you weren't getting there and and so often i mean partly the nice thing about sketch emanations is i I'm, it's like clockwork it's going to make me do it so i just keep going um and there's very often times where halfway through it felt like it wasn't working the drawing wasn't right you know, like if you saw all my um the sketches along the way sometimes they're you know they're awful but you keep going at it and you refine this bit and you change this bit and you switch the direction and then after a while you get to a point where it looks really good and it's so easy to assume that people just come across and do the good thing straight away but mm. so my my tip is just even when you look at it is to keep to keep going there was in my um in my research there was a guy called donald shun who's an architect um and he did a lot of research about how do, how do you teach and learn architecture and he talked about drawing as a reflexive conversation with the situation which mm. is takes a while to get your head around but the idea is that you you put a line on the page and then you see that line and that line informs your next line and so there's this constant like back and forth and like oh i put this down and it doesn't quite fit so i moved it over there and i erased this bit and i moved it over there and you're doing these these hundreds of iterations just while you're just still working on it and um but you don't get that if you just stop on your first bit when it <clears> didn't didn't come out like you wanted to so those are my my three ideas so yeah first draft is always perfect keep it really simple and keep going mm. those are three great three great tips and i wholeheartedly believe in each one and was imagining moments in my experience where i felt the same way especially number two like getting part way into something and thinking oh this is not going the way i want i'll just say well i'll just keep going a little bit more let's tweak that a little bit and a lot of times i found that the thing that i thought was going nowhere was a problem halfway through by the time I get done with it it's like one of my favorite things because you know there was really potential there that I had to unearth that potential and keep working it working it working it until it developed into the thing like you kind of fell in love with it which is kind of kind of a fun experience so yeah, I definitely I, believe in that I, I always love I always love like the making of things and, and like I went to see there's a random gallery in in Washington State where they had a Dr. Zeus exhibition and it had like his uh, sketches before the final books and it's just it's just always fascinating seeing people's process and realizing it's probably just as messy and confused yeah. as, as yours is and it's quite it's quite liberating whenever we watch films I'm always more interested in the making of the film than the film yeah. itself not, you know, like, 
Yeah, if, you're, if, if you happen to be a Star Wars fan and watch Mandalorian, there was a really great series. Uh, in addition to the show where it talks about how, how they made it and some of the crazy stuff they went through to achieve these, what at the outset seemed like impossible. How are we going to do that? They had some crazy idea and they, through process and everybody being creative, they were able to solve it. And you get to see how they achieved it. And when you watch the the episode, it's, you know, you wouldn't even think of all the the hoops that they're jumping through to make that happen, but yet they pulled it off. So, yeah, in the Absolutely. same way. I love that. I yeah. love it. Elizabeth Chesney. I think the, f the, the first one, and this is something that I used to champion a lot when I was teaching and trying to get kids to, to get out the mindset of, you've just come from, you know, maths, or you come from geography or history or wherever it might be, and you've come and sat in this room, you've suddenly got... You got to give kids credit because they've got to suddenly switch from one class to another, and I'll just be sitting going, I, "I can't, I can't get my head into this mindset, or it's it's not perfect, or it's whatever it might be." And I used to say to them, at, at the level they're doing, or at the level that most designers are doing, there's no standard. Don't worry about a standard. Try and remember there's no standard. This is not maths. One plus one doesn't equal two. So your standard is not my standard. Your design is not my design. And that's why I actually love sketch notes because everybody's is completely different. Everyone's styles are different. And trying to remember that unless you're doing architecture and building regulations, design is quite free. And don't you put that pressure on yourself. So give yourself a break. Mm -hmm. Remember that you're setting the standard in a way and, and try and sort of give yourself that, give yourself a break. Cause I think we all kind of get a bit too hung up on, oh, it needs to be like this. And it's kind of like, no, just there's, there's no standard to, to design, really. It's it's quite freeing. It's not as free as art, granted, <laughs> where yeah, that's very yeah. expressive. You know, it's, 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 you've got the fine line. You know, we do have some standards. <laughs> we're not, we, you know, we're not going to the really, really fluid art world. But yeah, try and remember that you're, you're the one giving yourself a hard time. So let up on yourself. You, there is no standard. So I'd say that's probably number one. Um, the, the second one is a bit something that I wish I, I did a lot early on in my career and I've only started doing in the last I think five, six years actually after I've finished uh, teaching really I'm going to get an example is I, I create playbooks because a hybrid of a sketchbook a scrapbook me, uh, important notes things I find I think are really interesting that I want to sort of scrapbook and the reason why I wish I started this earlier, so for those listening, I'm sort of holding up um, some like cutouts that I've done and I've annotated mm. them and things that I found online or logos and packaging that I like and I cut them out and I, I sort of stick them in and I write why I like them or why it's worked mm. and sort of annotating them. Um, but I also do my sketch notes in it from the books that I've read or the webinars I've attended and I have one for each year. And the reason I like them is sometimes it's really good to just if you've got that mental block is go back and look at something pick a subject you've read and think it could inspire you or if you think oh this is no good look what you were doing five six years ago and that's like when i look at the the thing i designed when i was 15 using microsoft yeah. paint or whatever it would have been i'm like oh yeah i've actually come quite away since then sort of thing so I, I wish I did these earlier because it's so interesting to look back on. But more importantly, I get inspiration every time I look at them because it's mm. personalized to me. It's my journey. It's it's my type of design and it helps inspire me to look at it and go, oh, yeah, why didn't I try that? Or, oh, wait, I forgot about this. And sometimes it can spark that idea or give you the confidence boost. You remember, you can actually do this, right? <laughs> it's like when I draw badly or I wouldn't say badly it's not a word I like to use but I, I, I draw in a way where I just think how, how do people pay me to do this sort of thing <laughs> and then so I deliberately sometimes go and I've got like some really nice hand-drawn coloured in really heavy duty 20 hour sort of um, pencil colours drawings in my sketch in my playbooks and my sketchbooks because it's just to remind myself I do actually have that talent mm, yeah it's just my brain's not using that talent at the minute it's clearly using it for something else you know it's worrying yeah. about you know what whenever for my dinner so it's it's nice to look back and it kind of reaffirms where you are but also gives you that mm. inspiration and I would say the third one is probably a classic one is walk the dog the amount of things I can solve by walking my dog 
I take him out for a walk. 45 minutes later, I'm either re inspired, I've fixed a problem while I've been walking a dog. I might think, oh, this is a different way to approach it. The dog is brilliant because I talk to him like a crazy dog owner I am. <laughs> you know, and he doesn't answer back. He has a good go, <laughs> granted, um, but he generally doesn't answer back. And um, I would say, so take that tea break, go in the garden, walk the dog. Like during the pandemic, mm. it was harder. So I used to go in the garden and just walk up and down a few times, throwing a ball with the dog. Because as soon as my brain, it's that that adage of to be creative, you also have to be be bored. You have to have that bit where your brain is not thinking about what you're trying to think about. And that's why we yeah. have our best ideas in the shower when you're going to sleep, because you've suddenly switched off. So I, I try, sometimes a dog gets four walks a day. <laughs> <laughs> Which he loves, I'm sure. Yeah, well, it gets to a point where he's like, oh, do we have to? <laughs> so, do we have to? Um, so I, I, I think we really underestimate getting away from your desk. Hmm. Get out in nature, walk the dog, just, you know, that fresh air. There's something about it that, for me, really works to help mm. me get over that struggle. And it could be any struggle. It could be a design struggle. It could be from the marketing stuff that I work on teams with. It's like, how should we approach this? So I find it's one of the best things I've, I've well, I'll say it's nine years in now. It's the best thing I've had, really, in terms of my tools as well. It's a very analog tool. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's good. That's a good reset. Mm. Hmm. Well, those are great tips. Thanks for sharing those, Elizabeth. Uh, very helpful and encouraging. Making me want to take my dog for a walk now, <laughs> which maybe I should do after this because I've been sitting for an hour. So, <laughs> well, yeah, and it's I, I've, I've like one of my friends. She she says she she plays with the kids. She says she'll go and she'll just like build Lego with the kids, or yeah. she'll go and color in with the kids because um, it's one of the few friends I got that's in a relatively similar role, so she gets it as well. And she says sometimes just doing that and like drawing it back to a more basic level makes her go, ah, that's how I could approach this problem, or this is that's how I could uh, do this logo idea because she's very much logo design, and she's like, ah, that's you know, it's like the penny drops moments because she's doing something related, but at the same time not thinking about it. So I, I, I really do think sometimes you have to give yourself a sort of give yourself ten minutes to go and do something else. Yeah. Let your subconscious work for a bit, I guess, mm. you know, so it can kind of churn on things and give you back some ideas. Yeah. Luke Kelvington. Yeah, I think I think the first is, uh, you know, to practice, you know, building those those icons so that, you know, later when you're stuck, uh, you know, you can open up that other journal and take a look at those those items. Um, I would encourage them to, you know, take courses kind of like what you've offered just to give them a little bit more courage or or mm -hmm. a little bit more uh uh just confidence tools. maybe yeah confidence yeah confidence the word i'm looking for there uh you know th that it is you know just simple images that can uh that could really resonate uh, with just a little bit of practice but then i think also you know using those tools like the noun project and mm -hmm. and not being afraid to every once in a while trace it out if it's you know to to make it look good um I think sharing it with friends has been something that I've really enjoyed mm -hmm. and letting them give you a little bit of feedback. Um, and it, it's, uh, I think that that will give them some more encouragement that, that, you know, it's something that people enjoy. And then it's, it's okay to wait, I think, to be inspired. You know, my journals are not full. Every page doesn't have images on it, right? So making sure that you, you keep, the practice of, of journaling and even if it's just the story and things that happen and then as the inspiration comes and, and the, you say hey this is something I really want to capture with a with an image uh, you know making sure that you keep that muscle memory of, of carrying that notebook around mm -hmm. you know and then that way when when the you know like I said the other day watching that SEC uh, media day it was like wow I yeah. need to, I need to capture this and I think this would be something that I could then share with friends and we could get a conversation going. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's a, uh, sometimes, you know, I'd move a lot. So connecting with others, um, if you send them an image, you know, and say, Hey, let's talk about this. This is really exciting. This is something I just heard. It can help build that conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and so it's not just a, well, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. Who's good? You know, so it's not just the, the yeah. family stuff, but Go it's a also, deeper, yeah. Yeah. 
Lena Pears. I think, and it, of course it depends on who it is and uh, where they are in this like journey to really work with visuals, but I think for me one really important key is mm. metaphors. It's really the way we understand the world and it affects so much on how we're thinking. So if you want to explain abstract concepts and um, different like specialities, metaphors are really where you need to work. And if you want to, because I think this is a part that has been really hard for me. <laughs> I've had to put a lot of energy into really start to mm. think in metaphors. And I think if you want to improve that and want some new energy in that, um, like you can take a creative writing class, because they use this a lot, or you can actually like start to read poetry. And of course you can also, like Dario has this excellent online mm -hmm. content with uh, like mm -hmm. ideas and yep. methods on how to develop metaphors. So that I think is really key to make your visuals explain things and to tell a story and I think also a really a key thing in change management is to tell a story so so explore metaphors and then I think this spring um, I've spent a lot of time online where I think there are such a lot of great thinkers that share a lot of uh, good material and I think another key is to get good structure in your drawings and your discussions. And I think that like mm. Dave Gray with his visual yeah. framework, I think that is just amazing and so useful. So if you want to get inspiration on how to structure a problem and then structure a drawing, then definitely check that out. And also if you're stuck, and I must say because this was so fun, when I started to look at your um, YouTube videos and workshops. Um, I think to change the format, because I also think that the format is really a base on, for how we think. This format you choose supports mm -hmm. your thinking. So swapping format can be really um, energy boosting. So when I went from large papers on the wall and I started like, okay, I'll, I'll buy a mold skin mm -hmm. and do the sketch noting kind of approach. I was amazed that something happened with my brain. I was like, wow, this is so fun. And this is so, and I can do this and that. So to try and change format, actually, I think mm -hmm. can do wonders. So remap yourself to a new format. It's a new challenge yeah. too, right? Because you have to take the things you know and the other thing. Yeah. Like for me, it would be the other direction, right? Yeah. So whenever I have to do large format, mm -hmm. which I did last spring, it was mm -hmm. a real, it was a fun mm -hmm. challenge. Like I was excited, like, how will I solve this, right? I'm a problem solver. So when I go into this, like I've got this big board, like I have yeah. to rethink all my orientation and my proportions, everything. Yeah. Yeah. How, you know, which, which marker yeah. I'm using, how many times do I need to draw to get the stroke that as wide as I want, right? Those are new problems, mm. but it's fun to mm. see it. You know, we have this immediacy mm. in the work we do that you can immediately see whether it's working or not and then tear off the page and then start again and, and, and learn from it, right? So same thing in the other direction, right? You probably had to take all these large format ways of working and then compress them onto the page, yeah. which is probably fun in a different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And liberating in some way to take away mm, some pressure, yeah. I think that. Have some fun. Mm. Yeah, that is also always essential and really a key to be able to be creative, have some fun. But sometimes when you're standing there and you're <laughs> we're at the client site, it's not <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah. But absolutely. That could be your fourth tip, have some fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that always. And also I think, uh, Another good tip there is uh, go play mm. with children. I think that is a great way to have some fun and boost yeah. your creativity. Yeah. Draw with them. Yeah, they it's fun, fun to draw with kids. I draw with my kids, probably not as much as yeah. I should, but I always enjoy drawing mm -hmm. with my son, especially. We make comic books together, so it's really fun. He'll, he'll do part and I'll yeah. do part. And 
we need to do that again this summer. So that's great. Yeah. Rev Andy Gray. Move okay, forward. three. Right. Um, and okay, you're not practice. limited to three. I mean, you could go beyond three. Be oh, like a, might be going a few few hundred actually. I'm going to a thousand <laughs> set. Yeah, yeah. Gain contact with me. Ask for some training. You know, I hardly can't charge anything at all. Um, uh, uh, actually, I mean, at some point, I was trying to come up with it with it already, but I'm uh, I've not managed to get around to it. But I am going to be putting a course together next year, which Good. is going to be it's going to be subscription based. Because the the cost of entry into into this world of graphic recording is huge. It's really expensive. So I wanted people to like have a start of a tent if they liked it, and then they can go and buy a bigger course. Or whatever. So anyway, that, that's that's one. That's 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 the intro to the tips. Um, but um, I would say practice. The biggest thing of all is is practice. So practice going slow, practice going fast. But one of the best things you could do, I think, is find the long form. Uh, videos on YouTube. So there's plenty of them. So I would hate to say this, but dump TED talks. They're great, but they're so fast. You yeah. just feel depressed because you can't keep can't up keep with up. them. Yeah. So I've, I've tried. Yeah, I've tried. It's like, uh, you know. Um, and some of them aren't all that good. So instead, what I suggest is go to, um, go and find the long form videos, um, especially those based around business. Because then you're learning at the same time. Okay, so that's the first thing. Graphic record the business ones. Okay. Second tip, and I don't know if this works in Android, but it certainly works on iPhone. When you've done your practice of your business tip, right, take a photograph of it. I mean, we always to take photographs of all the work. Because iPhone, if you then type into search, it will search for the words that are actually on your graphic recording did you know that don't know you knew that or not so no, suddenly I you, that. Yeah. yeah which is which is brilliant because then it means especially if you remember to write on the youtube name of where you found it when you want to reference back to your um to find the information so there are loads of things on there as well like uh you know, like um book summaries and things when you want to reference it you can say, oh, I remembered that it was the name of this guy who did it. So you type it into your iPhone and then it'll bring up the graphic recording. What's more, That's if you cool. say you want, if you wanted a subject on sort of like um, uh, abilities, so you wanted to find out, well, what is about, lots of people I've heard recently have talked about the word ability and I've now I've written it a few times. Right. So you type the word ability in and it brings up all the graphic recordings you've done on ability. And now you can link the ideas together. So that's really useful and related to that is um, if you're going to become a professional graphic recorder, it stuck with me the other day. So this is new thinking. I like to give people new thinking. We are the best networkers in the world. Um, and there's massive value putting people who can network. But because we're going in to deal with different companies and people, we can network people together. So that's, a, that's another tip. Um, and the final one, I think, um, you would say, which is, um, uh, which is really useful, is... Um, it's a technique which is called something about and I got this from the coaching when we were being coached mm -hmm. so uh, the way that it went was that there were two is that you were put in a partnership with somebody and you talk to them and you were told right tell them everything about what recently happened so you tell them a story and then the other person has to tell them tell you back everything they can remember from what you said and you go no you didn't remember everything no, you, you know, there was bits you missed you know they said, we'll do it again, but this time the person, uh, another story, but this time the other person's going to summarise it into two or three sentences. And so this time you go, oh, actually, you, you got it quite right there, but you missed this bit of this bit. They said, right, you can do it one more time with another, with another partner. And this time you're going to go, um, you're going to go say something about and give them one word. Okay. So you do that, so you're listening, and you finally realise you can't remember everything. So all that stress to try to remember any content. And so you just relax and let the whole ideas just merge. And then you get the kind of like this this one idea that seems to almost evolve in your head. And then you go, is it something about this? And you say one word, and the other person goes, yes, that's exactly it. And it's the weirdest of feelings. So, you know, so when you give it, you know, when you experience this, you go, I just felt hurt. Now, if you take that and apply that to graphic recording and, and visual note taking and sketch noting, you suddenly realise that you can use so few words, and the fewer words you use, the better, which is yeah. brilliant. So, what I tend to do in my process is, you know, I've seen people write on post it notes and stick them up and stuff, but I couldn't do that. If you get a 2B pencil, so these are for people working on graphic recording on big walls, so top tip for them here. 
you can actually write on the wall with a pencil and from a distance of about five, six foot away, no one can see the writing. They can't see it. You write quite big, no one can see it. So you don't even need to rub it off at the end. So you write it in pencil as you're going along. So when people start, they're often, you know, like I'm doing today, waffle mode. They're telling stories, you know, this is my history. It's got nothing to do with the thing they're going to talk about. And you don't want to catch all that, so you can just like, write it. And just write out what they're saying, long form if you want, just so you can remember the bits they've said, because something might be relevant in the future. And then suddenly they'll say something and they'll say it slightly slower and slightly louder. And you'll go, ah, that's important. And then you look back at the notes and now you can create, take everything they've said and turn it into an image. And then you're off because now you're drawing at the same time as listening. So you can do that and bringing all those things together, I think, uh, creates a, a rather exciting space. Well, those are great tips. I do apologise, that was rather a lot. I think you ended up with like five or six, which is great. Yeah, I know. Well, you didn't limit it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I told you you could go beyond three, so, you know, you're... Oh, you're I can waffle here. forever, I'm afraid. <laughs> Ashton Rodenheiser. Yeah, well, I've been having a lot of conversations lately with... Um, I'm just going to talk from like a beginner perspective. Maybe that isn't... Okay. You know, yeah, we'll just talk fine. about that for a second. Because I've been, of course, like talking to so many people that are like brand new to this... And there seems to be a really big leap between live and not live. So Mm. when I teach it, when I talk about it, I always go in with the assumption that they're going to do it live, right? So I talk about, well, you don't have a lot of time, so do this. You don't have a lot of time, so do this. But Mm. what I'm finding is that people, like that is actually like quite a large ask. Like learn all these skills, do all the listening thinking and do it live, like do it right now. Mm. So I've been really working with people to encourage them to do whatever you need to do. Make notes on sticky notes, do your traditional way you would capture, do type them out, do whatever you need to do to get the information. And then you can always create the sketch note later. Like use it as, it doesn't have, it's great, yeah, to do it in the moment, But if that is like too much of an ask and it feels too scary, like give yourself permission to capture in a way that you feel comfortable and with the idea that you're going to create a sketch note of it later. So maybe the purpose of creating the sketch note is a little bit different. It's it's less about Mm -hmm. the immediate understanding, which is one of the things that I love about sketch noting and, and visual thinking in general is that like, making it so it's uh, you have that learning in the moment. So, you know, you're gonna be doing your learning maybe a little bit later when you're creating mm-hmm. your sketch note. But, you know, I think like, I've just been having to give people a lot of permission lately. Like, mm-hmm. don't worry about doing it live. Do whatever you want, then create it, right? And then you don't, you have the, you can focus on the, the aesthetics or the things, or if you're doing it digitally, you can move things around and you can feel mm-hmm. like, you know, because if you if you create one and you feel good about it, you're going to do another one. But if you do it live and it's clunky and it's messy and you feel horrible about it, you're not going to do it again, right? Or it's going to be a really difficult to kind of get back to it. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think we have this idea that it always has to be live, and I think especially when people are new, that is a big ask, and it doesn't always have to be right like when I got into it that was my default and that's just what I do and now I'm just like so tuned to it that I feel like I you know we kind of forget that that isn't going to come and they're just like a little too scary for some people to kind of just learn all the things now do it live (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. um so that would I would say that you know however you need to create it do that right if it's live that's okay if it's not live um one thing that I don't know, maybe is a little controversial, but I'm going to share this one. Something that I've been thinking a lot about lately is um, like what might be considered like cliche drawings, right? So I gave the example of like a light bulb. And I think because I'm working with beginners so much right now is that I've really been leaning in on the idea that like cliches are okay. Like drawing something that might be considered a cliche I think is awesome because I think it's it's that leap again, right? If we go, like if you've been in this community for a long time, you're likely challenging yourself like, oh, how could I draw this to explain this concept or bring these ideas together into like, 
you know, uh, I know he had Dario on, he does these like beautiful visual metaphors. Metaphors, yeah. Right, like all these like beautiful, like how we can kind of visualize these like concepts. And I think like that is a beautiful thing. But I think for people that are newer, it's like, that's just like too much. Like, like, like they can't even think about that because they don't even know how to know how to draw a light bulb yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know, the light bulb icon saved me because, like I said, like I'm not joking. I drew one on everything I did for years because <laughs> it was like I felt confident in in drawing a light bulb. And it, you know, and there was always an aha moment or something I wanted to stick out on the page, and that's where I would put my little light bulb. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, I think like leaning in and those basics or things that might be considered cliches I like I think that's okay like I think we can you know we can always be challenging ourselves right um and how we want to draw things but leaning in on some of those like rudimentary or basic drawings of her people have been doing it for a while like I think that's totally fine um because you have to start somewhere Right, you can't just like, oh, I'm gonna go from not knowing sketch noting at all. Now I'm gonna like create these really like complex drawings, <laughs> right? There's yeah. like has to be this like ladder, or this stepping stone approach, right? Um, so if you needed permission to like draw something that might be considered a cliche, I highly encourage it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dario always says that you know, metaphors is the next level. So he, yeah. the audience he's going after are people that feel confident about the cliche stuff, but they want to rise up to another level. And that's cool, right? I love that. Maybe for many people, the cliches are just fine for the audience and the work they do. Yeah. And they never feel the need. Need to. And not doing it professionally, like it's fine. Absolutely, yeah. And I think, yeah, it is beautiful to have that opportunity kind of like step up your next. Because I'm like, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm in a space like, I don't want to keep drawing the same thing over and over again. Like that's not a good time. I want to challenge myself. For you, it's something, a challenge. Yeah. Something that I want to do. But yeah, someone who is like more new or even just have been doing it for a year or two or you know it's mm-hmm. it can be um you know just remind yourself like don't make this more complicated than you need to especially when you're doing it live like just you know building that visual vocabulary over time and starting with something that might be considered a cliche um mm-hmm. you know and and hopefully you kind of get into that not comparing mode right we kind of already talked about right. that it could be a tip of course right of like really trying not to compare you know like when i went to the 2015 austin texas it was like I really was was on this really funny line of intimidation and inspiration, <laughs> yeah. right? And when you're in, intimidated, can you flip it upside down and turn it into inspiration instead, right? It's you know, so there's there's just threw another tip in there for you too. Um, All right. I think the only the only maybe the last thing I'll just sort of mention, which kind of maybe feels like an off topic from what we've talked about so far, but one thing that I tend to spend a lot of time on is letters and if if you have nice clean letters your sketch notes can look awesome no matter if if you don't have a lot of drawings on it or a lot of drawing yeah. elements like lines and containers and things um, so I spend an unfortunate amount of time with people to try to like just help them clean up their letters a little bit because mm-hmm. I always find that is such a people have this really funny relationship to their handwriting it's like you love it, you hate it. It's in between. Like it's a it's a funny thing, right? With people's relationship with their handwriting. So you almost have to get people like you have to get comfortable with like this is my handwriting and I'm gonna embrace my own style. But I'm just gonna like try to clean things up a little bit, right? Every time you make a letter, it kind of looks the same every time. Or picking up your pen and doing like things like that, right? Um, because I feel like if you feel really confident, because there's so much content that's always captured. If you feel really confident about your letters, then everything else will kind of just go from there, mm-hmm. right? But if you're, you're every time you go to write something down, you're like feeling not great about it, <laughs> then um, you know that's like I guess like I'm just in this headspace right now of like how do we just encourage people to do more? Like have a good experience, right? And if you have like nice clean letters, then. Um, You'll have, I think you'll have a more positive experience with it too. So mm. I think all I'm of my years, all of my years in um, early childhood education also primed me for this work too, because my letters were pretty decent <laughs> going into it, because we literally yeah. had to practice them um, and, and all that good stuff. But yeah, it's maybe a bit of off topic from what we've talked about, but I just wanted to mention it because it's something that seems to be coming up for me a lot lately with people. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think one of the practices I did, I haven't done this for a long time when we did workshops in person, was I uh, had people do sketch notes with no drawings. Yes. All they could do was lettering. And they could yes. make it bigger, they can they could do all kinds of stuff with it, but it had to be a letter. Yeah. And then you start to realize, like, well, actually, letters are really drawings at some degree yeah. once you get to a certain scale. Yeah. So you're technically breaking the rule, but you're not breaking the rule, which yeah. is kind of fun when people realized it. And maybe that's an exercise I need to reintroduce. I don't. I don't know. But yeah. No, yeah, it's I, a, it's a good one. Yeah. I always say like letter or letters are drawings in the skies. Exactly what you mm -hmm. said. Basically, right? You yeah. know, it's a. Yeah. Like if you can draw, if you can write letters, you can draw, right? So, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a, it is, it is, it is pretty darn foundational sketch noting, getting the information yep. down, right, and like finding that speed where you can capture quickly, you know, but it's still fairly legible, right? Like it's this mm -hmm. kind of song and dance. So, yeah, I always kind of end up talking about lettering and stuff a lot in the beginning when I'm with people. Um, which, you know, is, may not be the most exciting thing in the world, but it's pretty darn important. So I'm like, just bear with me. Let's just get through this and develop the skill a little bit before we kind of go into drawing. Because I feel like people, they see it and they go immediately to drawing. They're like, oh, I just want to draw, draw stuff. That's exciting, right? And like in my book, I put like little, like draw little icons, I put at the very end of the book, right? Mm -hmm. There's a very, it was very intentional why it's like at the end of the book, I didn't want to start it with it because then you, you know you need to get some of that foundational stuff d down first before you because if you just learn a bunch of icons and none of the other stuff you know like how ideas connect together and all of that then you know it's just gonna it's not gonna be as beneficial and you might burn out quicker quicker because you're putting too much pressure that you have to like draw a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. and it's not about that at all yeah yeah, yeah. that's good another good observation. I don't know if it quite qualifies as a tip, but I guess it is. Sure, it's, why not? Lots of tips. Let's add there. another, pile another one on there. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, yeah, that's what I, that's what I got for you today. That's what I got for you today. Good. Yeah. Well, that's, that's great. That's really encouraging. Gary Copperboss. Yeah, I, 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 I think, uh, and, and this isn't too long ago myself where I started to feel like it's a bit of a rut and also a mm. rut, but also sometimes when you transition, because I, I moved from uh, agency life into now my own consultancy, which is, it's a different world and it's, yeah. it's, it's a different um, metabolism almost. I mean, it's just, it's just different. And I think uh, that led me to this idea of the tip is sometimes just continue to like, and I'll use my case of, of writing and, and, and drawing and things is to create and share. I mean, there are mm -hmm. so many people that uh, um, I'm sure yourself and I know uh, people like uh, Austin Cleon has a, a, a book mm -hmm. or two out there. It's just like, just put it out and, and let let that be a, a source of conversation. And during uh, during that time when I started to expand some of the community with sketch noters, I would just do things, you know, whether it was listening to a particular podcast and I just would, would draw it and say, here's something I mm -hmm. did. And it turned out to be something on LinkedIn where I started to, to share more and I heard back more and I got yeah. feedback. So whenever you're stuck, put something out. And, and if there, that's the beauty right now of, of even LinkedIn, if there are people that you admire or people that, whose opinion you'd, you'd appreciate, you know, share something and say, there's something I'm working. I'd love to get your, your thoughts and, you know, mm -hmm. there's not, no, no harm could come from doing creating something and putting it out to and, and sharing it i mean you might get you know feedback that you know you know people sometimes aren't are always kind but i think by and large uh the tip would be to just you know create every day and put it put it out there and mm -hmm. and start conversations with it yeah um, i mean there were there were times where i i do and i, I call them copious notes now because my, my name mm -hmm. is cobra yeah. bus so i will listen to a podcast or something of of an example of if I was stuck thing, I'm, I'm not generating anything anymore. I will listen to a podcast or, or something. A friend of mine who wrote for Forbes interviewed Brian Grazer. And uh, it, it had to do with this. He was launching a book called The Curious Mind. Mm -hmm. And my friend Steve said, here, could you just listen to this, you know, uh, um, listen to this interview that I recorded and uh, and can you give me some some your takeaway on it I listened mm. to it and sketch noted the whole thing <laughs> and sent it to him and he sent it to Brian Grazer 
who uh, is in the process of, of uh, a couple of other things with this writer friend of mine. But in doing in doing that sketch noting, uh, I learned a ton about this idea of, of I'll cut to the chase on that one is that Brian Grazer has curious conversations from his book mm. every two weeks he talks to someone who has nothing to do with Hollywood or directing mm. or producing to learn something so uh, maybe a long way around to the other idea of do things and share is if there's something you want to learn draw it yeah because there's a there's a um, there's this just that that um, eye hand thing is that your mind learns when you you draw it and it, it turns out that many of the, the that type of thing I, I sent work to authors or even podcast uh, um, guests and they loved it and we had relationship of hmm. you know whether it's LinkedIn or whatever of send me more or so I, I think if if I'm if I'm stuck I try to engage new people with work I've done and see where it goes because in some hmm. cases it it's led to consulting gigs it's yeah. led to uh, there was a, 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 a two authors that wrote a book, uh, and I, I, I was taken by it, and I, I, I did uh, a quick sketch note for each of the chapters, or actually for just one of the chapters, and they hired me to do that for all of their chapters. Wow, that's cool, yeah. And, and it just so, ruts are just kind of like, you know, a, a pause, and it's like, okay, now what? You know, and I think it's it's uh, when I get to that point when I'm stuck, it usually means I'm at a pause of some sort. Sort mm. I need I need an interaction with somebody. Need a reason to move forward, I guess, right? And 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 someone will inspire it, or someone will validate something I've been you know thinking about. And I think it's it's I've learned to uh, rely on others to uh, get mm. me through uh, these little pauses and ruts. Mm. I would if I were to re restate those, I guess the first one I heard was. Um, if you're in a rut, start doing, do something and share it. Yes. The second is if you want to learn something, draw it right? because you have to process the information to understand it. And then the third would be share the, share your work with the people who inspired you. So like a podcast guest, an author, and you never know where that interaction might lead. If anything, you'll just have their appreciation and you've done your, all those three things in a row as you done something to move forward you've learned something new and you've made an interaction that's a really great and, and I, I love the distillation on that mike thank you and, and i think the the other i don't know maybe it's a wrapping for all of it that mm -hmm. i have found whenever i, I get stuck in and in, in a crossroads whatever how you want to describe it to do some of those things but it really helps to just get on someone else's radar yeah and, and I found whether it was from a, you know other brand consultants uh, or those those sketch noters in other parts of the world, get on other people's radar. Mm -hmm. They get on your radar, and and all of a sudden, the, the, I find myself not stuck as much because yeah. uh, because of that um, happening to me. So I, I think there's something about that, and I think. We live in a time now where it's it's much easier to get on other people's radars because we have such access now. Whether it's you know, mm -hmm. Instagram or or LinkedIn is is very big from a you know a business right. standpoint. So use it. Yeah, that's that's those are great tips. Thanks. This episode of the Sketchnote Army podcast is brought to you by Concepts, a perfect tool for sketchnoting, available on iOS, Windows, and Android. Concepts Infinite Canvas lets you sketch note in a defined area while still enjoying infinite space around it to write a quick note, scribble an idea, or keep pre-drawn visual elements handy for when you need the most. The Infinite Canvas lets you stretch out and work without worrying if you'll run out of space. And when combined with powerful vector drawing that offers high resolution output and complete brush and stroke control, you have a tool that's perfect for sketch noting. Search Concepts in your favorite app store to give it a try. The Sketchnote Army podcast was created by me, Mike Rohde, and brought to you by Rohde Design Studios. It's produced and edited by Alec Polianis of Amp Creative Studios. The theme music was created by John Schiedemeyer. To support the creation of this show, I invite you to buy one of my books, The Sketchnote Handbook or The Sketchnote Workbook. You can find the books on Amazon or go to peachpit.com and use the code RODY40 for 40% off. 
Please share this podcast with other visual thinking friends and be sure to leave a nice rating on iTunes or your favorite podcast listening app so others can find the show.